Saying the entrance exams for UA High are flawed is a bit of an understatement. They're focused on combat skills more than anything else, even though there's a bunch of qualities that make someone a good hero, other than being strong enough to take down robots. While some of Deku's classmates had no trouble taking out the robots and racking up a high score, proving that they deserved to be in UA High, other characters had me scratching my head trying to figure out how they got accepted into the school. Don't get me wrong, a lot of the students in Class 1A have super useful physical quirks, but it's just hard for me to imagine how they used those quirks effectively against the robots in the exam. Like, how did Mineta score highly on the exam when he's literally scared of his own shadow and can only throw sticky bows from his head? The way for students to learn how to be a pro hero is, well, by spending time with a pro hero in work studies, of course. While this sounds like a super smart and obvious idea, I think it's surprising that they're able to start work studies so early in their education. Think about it. In most professions, you learn all there is to learn and then get thrown in the workforce. They've barely even learned about their quirks and they're already working with a pro hero and saving lives. It's a bit of a stressful spot to be in for a young student, right? Now it makes sense that the pros would want to recruit members of Class 1A after the way they handle the UA. Deku unleashes quirk many times, and most of the time the other students are just freaked out over how cool it is, not realizing that it's the exact same quirk as All Might's One for All. Come on, you guys! The only student who's caught on seems to be Bakugo, who had more context than the other students. But still, he's the only one who knows that it was All Might who made Deku the ninth holder of One for All. So you have to wonder why Bakugo was the only one who made the connection between All Might and Deku's quirk. Now, for storytelling purposes, it makes sense for the character who's jealous or upset with another character to obsess over that character and find their dirty little secret, which is exactly what Bakugo did, but what does that say about the other students? Are they just too dumb to notice? Yeah, we're just gonna say that they chose not to notice so that these rivals can keep on duking it out. If son or daughter was constantly running into the League of Villains and always getting into harm's way, wouldn't you want to do something about that? Like, I don't know, get him the heck out of there? Yeah, I know I would, but the world of My Hero Academia is clearly much different than ours. Now, Deku's mom, Inko, did make it clear that her son was stressing her out, and she did her best to try and get Deku to transfer schools. But all it took was a touching speech by All Might to get her to change her mind. The thing is, Inko is the only case we've seen of this in the anime so far. None of the other parents have any issues sending their kids to a school that may or may not be attacked by a gang of dastardly villains each day. Even Bakugo's parents don't care, and they have all the reason to after his kidnapping. I'm not complaining, though, because it's pretty awesome that the group is stuck together through all of this. Hey, that. But have you ever stopped to think about Class 1B for a second? They deserve your attention just as much as Class 1A. Okay, they definitely don't deserve too much attention since they're the boring class, but there are plenty of students in Class 1B who have quirks that are just as good, if not better, than the quirks in Class 1A. Yeah, Class 1A has all the flashier quirks, but Sero's tape quirk is not one of them. Sorry, Sero, I had to say it. The reality of the matter is that Class 1B isn't that much weaker than Class 1A. They just don't have the main character and the secondary characters in their class, so they don't get any attention. It's just by chance that Class 1B is less involved in the events that occur on the show. Or is it because All Might is less involved with them and all the villains want to do is be the one to take him out? Eh, eh, it could be both. I do have to think that if Class 1B were involved in the League of Villains hideout raid, they'd be much more well known than they is that no one's been expelled from the school either. Now, like most of these points, it makes sense for the plot of the show if nobody from Class 1A gets expelled. But there were plenty of opportunities for it to happen. It seems like no matter how many rules Deku and his closest friends break, they can never get expelled. The second time Deku and Bakugo fought, they went out past curfew, caused plenty of damages, and nearly took each other out. And what did they get for breaking so many rules? Eh, just a measly suspension. It's fine. And I didn't expect two of the most important characters in the show to get expelled from the setting where most of the show takes place, but the repercussions for their actions weren't incredibly harsh. Eraserhead himself told the group that they should have been expelled for disobeying orders and rescuing Bakugo from the League of Villains. But he obviously came up with an excuse not to. I just want